Hello, my friends, and welcome to Beyond Fame. I am here with my good friend now. He has gone through a transition, so I've got to call him Patrick Cole, and I introduced him last week as uh, Cole Blaylock. So we're going to talk about that, but for all intents and purposes, we are talking to Patrick Cole. He's a mentalist. He's a magician, and he's just a great guy. He is what uh, Beyond Fame is about and about talent and about sharing it with others, and so I had to have him on the show. This is our second series in our video series, so we're going to do a little something first uh, for you guys, and then we're going to talk about uh, Patrick and what he does and all that good stuff. So, uh, Patrick, I'm going to go first. All right, and sounds good. I'll, and then I'll let you go. So okay. I have some cards here, and um, we're going to play a game of imagination. So I'm going to hold up some cards, and we're going to say they're the four queens. Okay. I'm going to give you a choice, red or black. Black. Perfect. I'm going to take the black queens. We're going to throw the uh, red queens away. We have the black queens, the spade or the club. Which one? The spade. The spade. Are you sure? Yes. I want to be fair about this. You're going to stick with the spade or do you want to change it? Uh, I'm going to stick with it. All right. We're going to take the club, toss it. We've got the uh, queen of spades. I'm going to turn it face up and put it in the uh, deck of blue cards here. So now okay. we, did, we didn't plan this ahead of time. You didn't nope. know I was going to do this. So if that were to actually be reality, there would now be one face-up card. And I'm just going to spread them just like that. And there is your queen of spades. It is. So now, and we didn't plan this, right? So no we way I knew you were going to choose that. Actually, I did know you were going to choose that. In fact, I was so sure you were going to pick the queen I put a red back on it. I was so sure you were going to stick with the queen of spades. I didn't even bother to bring the rest of the queens with me. So there you go. Very cool. Thank you. Very, very cool. That's a very fun one. Love it. That is. That's very fun. All right. Let's see what you got, sir. Okay. Um, let's see, I'm going to have, I don't know how much you know about rope. A little bit. Um, but I I'm gonna step take, up with it. That's right. So I'm going to take some <laughs> rope here. If I can. Um, but every rope, no matter how short or long it is. Okay. It's got two things in common. They both have, they all have two ends and a center. Right? Okay. Fair. Yep. Um, if you take. Do you know what happens if you take the ends off of a rope? Uh, it would be a... Nope. You're just left with a center. All right. There we go. <laughs> very, wow. Cool. And then, but I mean, obviously that can't happen. So you just take those ends and just nice. throw them right back on. Wow. That was cool. Thank you. Or you can take, here, watch. You can take and tie a knot. All right, Daniel, I don't think you're ready for this part. Okay. One, two, three. It's the appearing scissors trick. I like it. Very classy. But they actually work. That's the, that's the. That, yeah, that's cool. Oh, man, that's the unfortunate part, though, is I didn't, I didn't cut it. Yeah, exactly. now, you have, now you have more ends, right? Well, I didn't cut it exactly in half. Oh. It's a lot less impressive. Um. Let's just start over. Wow. Uh, so if you take the ends of a rope and you put them opposite the center, uh -huh. center over here, ends here, we'll take one end and put it in this hand and then just shake it out this side. What? Take one end, put it in this hand, and then just <laughs> let it fall <laughs> That's out. Here, That's in. Here, we'll... Uh, awesome. We'll take it one one step further. We'll take uh, this rope here, and are right, you ready for your favorite part again? One, two, three. <laughs> yes, gotta love the scissors. Give it another cut there. Nice. No, okay. Now, first thing that you notice when I put these three ropes 
all side by side. All right, first thing you're going to notice, you're a smart enough guy. Here, watch all. They don't, they don't match up. Well, the first thing you notice is probably that they're all manufactured by the Baronian Trading Company, right? Oh, yeah. I, I mean, obviously. I, sorry, long day. I, I yeah. didn't, yeah. So look, watch, we'll take, <laughs> these, we'll take these ends here. And I found out if you move them quickly enough, it looks like, don't be fooled though. Don't, it's just all an right. optical illusion. Okay. It looks like they become the same length. Okay. Just like that, they all become the same length. Oh, nicely done. All right. Yeah. Um, I, I could buy that. Yeah, pretty good, huh? Well, I mean, obviously, <laughs> can't ha I told you not to be fooled. I told you not to be fooled. It can't actually yeah. happen. Uh, right. If it could, though, it would look something like that. Wow. Where there would be one, two... What? Three ropes, all the same length. And of course, you can you can take and uh, and handle all of these, and you'll know that just like I said, they are all different lengths. That's amazing. Love it. Very cool. Thank you, Patrick. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, appreciate you being here. Of course. Well, let's dive in. <laughs> so. This is Beyond Fame. We talk about talent. What is your definition of talent? So, you know, I um, talent is a really interesting, interesting thing to define, um, especially how there's a there's a pretty common um, discussion between is talent something you're born with? Is talent something that you develop? Um, right. I personally believe talent is uh is the latter um it's something that you actually it's kind of a mix but i think it's more it has more of the latter um into okay. it um i wasn't born to be a skilled magician <laughs> um i've been a i've been a talker <laughs> all my life and i've uh i've been the center of attention my entire life nice. uh, but i didn't I didn't have the skills to to perform sleight of hand or uh, anything like that uh, until until I started working at it. And um, it's interesting because it's something that's continually growing. Right? It's something that's continually moving forward. Uh, if you would have asked me a year ago uh, if I were a talented magician, I would have told you yes. All right, but looking back. Now, I don't think I was a very talented magician at all. Okay. Uh, I feel like in the past year, I've made massive strides. Now, a year from now, if you were to ask me if current me is, is talented, I'd probably, hopefully, I'll say, you know, not as much as I am now. And so I, sure. I personally, it's, it's hard to define, um, but I just feel like it's that never-ending desire to continually better yourself at something okay. uh, and so then there's certainly different stages to it uh, but right. i i think that it's a lot of hard work and, and determination i agree uh and uh, a lot of my guests now are saying that it's something that you're passionate about and that you want to work yeah. toward too because you are passionate about it so i think that's definitely an element of it as well yeah so, Mr. Patrick, who I formerly knew you by another name, yes. <laughs> tell me about who you are and what your origin is and how you got started in magic and how you found your talent. For sure. I, um, you want the long story or the short story? <laughs> well, it's about an hour of podcast, so you, your choice. Magician's We've got time. choice. We've got plenty of time. Um, yeah, so when I was seven years old, my... Uh, my uncle gave me a magic kit, um, just a run-of-the-mill magic kit with a few, few fun things in it, and um, and I, I I remember doing a few tricks. Not that it was a, what originally piqued my interest, right? Um, but I was seven years old. I didn't stick with it. Um, it was just something that kind of would come and go. But I always did have an interest in it. Um, I thought it was something fun. Um, when I started getting a little older, 10, 11, I started realizing that I was pretty good at, um, 
tricking my friends and, and getting some pretty decent reactions. Um, and when I was probably 12 or 13, somewhere, somewhere in that, uh, age range, um, I was bullied pretty badly growing up. Uh-huh. And, uh, and so I was doing a, a card trick for, for some of my friends. Um, and one of the guys that, um, tormented me pretty, pretty good. He, uh, came over to, to, you know, mess with my friends and I, and, um, and he saw the just very end of the card trick. He said, wait, do that again. <laughs> and, uh, so I did it again. I was so nervous and I did it again and he called over all of his other friends. Oh boy. Nice. Said, all right, watch this, watch this. And, uh, he said, do it again. And I did it again. And basically the deal that we struck up was <laughs> if I showed them a new trick every day, I didn't get picked on. Awesome. So I would go yeah. home frantically searching YouTube and trying to convince my parents to buy me books and whatever I could do. That way I didn't get bullied at school the next day. Wow. Um, and eventually it just kind of skyrocketed, skyrocketed into where I actually wasn't you know, the, it wasn't even just because of the magic. It was just because they realized, oh, hey, this guy's not, you know, weird or, or whatever. You know, we're all weird, but this guy, we don't need to pick <laughs> on it. You know, he's not a bad guy. And so it was, it was really cool. It was, it was, it was yeah, my escape, awesome. from, escape from that. And, uh, and so, yeah, so that, that's what got me to really hooked on it. Um, I, I started realizing I was pretty good at it, um, performing um it's kind of around doing some shows and um for you know for friends and and family and then when i was 20 uh-huh. yeah when i was a few years ago um i i did my first paid show um i i made $30 nice and i remember thinking Someone just paid me $30 <laughs> to do what I love. This is insane. Oh, That's my awesome. goodness. <laughs> I can't believe this. They just paid me a dollar a minute. Nice. I can't believe it. Uh, and I was 20 years old, and I it just blew my mind. Um, and then, because up until can, that point. Can, can I interject? What Can you remember what? your 30 minute show was with like what effects and stuff you did yeah i did uh um i did some some sponge balls nice i did a few card tricks um and i did a um a quick change very cool yeah wow yeah, just, pretty, uh, impress- pretty impressive that's uh for they got a they got a good deal for 30 bucks then yeah, yeah, and for those that don't know what a quick change is, it's uh, just a you know turn you wear one outfit, turn around, and wear another. And there's um, another one, yeah. That's yeah, cool. and so that was uh, that, and I had a special routine that I created with that, and um, and so I performed uh, with and it was uh, it was at a small coffee shop in Southern Mississippi. Um, I performed with a improv comedy troupe. Um, they did some improv and then I came out and did a 20 to 30 minute show. And then they came after me and Im- did an improv scene about how I got into magic and, and all this. And it was really, it was really clever. Very funny. That's cool. Yeah. It was really cool. And then they improv, they kind of improv my show and, uh, and doing magic wrong and stuff. It was very clever. <laughs> very, very good. Awesome. Um, but yeah, that was my first taste of uh, I could get paid for this. Right. Um, uh, because in my head up until then, um, it was either doing magic as a hobby or making multi millions um, doing magic. I didn't. I didn't know there was an in between. Okay. Um, and and so that was kind of my first glimpse into it. Um, fast forward uh, a year or so, uh, I got I get married um, and start doing birthday parties. Um, I got hired to do, um, 30 minutes of walking table to table at an event. Uh, and they paid me $300 and my mind was blown, blown, um, that, that I could make this much money. Um, 
and that was kind of the the the, the real tipping of the iceberg that this is this is what I actually want to make a living doing. Uh, so I worked I worked several different jobs, um, sometimes two at a time, three at a time, um, to be able to support my family and and grow my career. Um, and as of uh, November of last year, um, magic has been my sole source of income. So, um, yeah, it's been, it's been a lot of fun. It's been a, it's been a journey. Uh, it's, it's has really, really slow months. It has better months. It just kind of still, still building the business for sure. Yeah, yeah, definitely. What was your, what was your first uh aha other than, so you did your, 30 minute show for $30. Yep. And then you did that, your $300 table gig. What was kind of more of the defining moment, though, of wanting to go magic full time and yep. searching out your passion as your career? For sure. I, uh, I was actually up towards your neck of the woods when I realized it's what I wanted to do uh, for the rest of my life. Um, I was in Rexburg, Idaho. I was. My wife was at BYU Idaho. Uh -huh. uh, we were we were just dating at the time. Um, I had I was living in Mississippi. I flew out here to Utah uh, to to be with her for a week and meet her family. Uh, we had been dating just a few months, uh, and she had class on the weekend um, or on the week um, one of the days. So we drove up um, and were there for several days. But she had class. And I walked around campus just performing for people. Nice. And I had a crowd of about 15 people. And people were laughing, smiling. Um, it was the first moment where it was way more about the emotional connection uh -huh. than about just fooling people. Nice. Um, and it was in that moment, that's when I went, this, I want to do something like this for the rest of my entire life. Um, I want to entertain. I want to make people happy for the rest of my life. Um, if that's doing magic, so be it. If it's doing something else, fine. Right. But I will not be content working a nine to five. Um, that's just not not me, not the way I'm programmed. Um, and so I've done everything I could from that point on to make sure that, that I could do that with my life. Very cool. Um, let's talk a minute about... I met you at a magic conference. Yeah. And a few uh, years ago now. A few years ago. And I remember seeing you and I'm like, okay, this is a cool dude. And I wanted to go up and say hi. So I did. I think you were doing uh, a mentalism mind reading. And I thought that was super cool. And then I just saw you, I think, in the hall and you were rehearsing probably for the competition mm -hmm. trying to do your pattern and stuff so I, I I knew you were a person who was really passionate about what you do and really takes time to go through the steps of your creation so mm -hmm. I want I want to talk to you about creating magic and yeah. what what inspires your magic for sure um so it's gone through it's gone through stages um, as, as I've grown as a performer, uh, and as an entertainer, um, it used to be about how, how badly can I fool someone? Right. Um, and that's not a bad thing to want to do as a magician. That's, I mean, that's our goal. If you're not fooling people, you're not doing it right. Right. Um, but if you're only focusing on fooling people, you're also not doing it, doing it right. In my opinion. Sure. Um, but now, um, which I think is my most um, most mature and uh, I guess elevated thought process on creating a show or creating a piece. Um, I look at things that inspire me or that uh, make that make me emotional, uh -huh. um, no matter what emotion that is, that make me really happy, um, that make me feel sad make me feel um empathy just whatever whatever it be i look at things that make me me emotional and i break down why um one of my one of my uh favorite um 
musicians of all time is uh is Brett Smith. He's the Brent Smith, he's the lead singer of a band called Shine Down. Um and so one time someone asked him how he um who his influences were, who he looked at. Um and one of his influences was Otis Redding. Oh, nice. and, but not the dock of the bay. Exactly. But he didn't want to look just at Otis Redding. He wanted to look at who inspired Otis Redding to be like he is. Nice. And so he studied the people that Otis Redding said inspired him. Wow. So he could be more like Otis Redding. He felt like by emulating the people that Otis Redding emulated, he could be more like who he wanted to be. That's cool. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, I thought it was such a fa- uh, fascinating thought process. So I look at what makes me emotional, and then I dig back behind why, why those things are created. Uh, for example, my current show um, that I'm writing and, and scripting and having directed is um, – uh, it's a 45 minute show, um, a lot of emotion and, and, uh, and theatrical theatricality. Um, but I got the idea from the show, uh, for the show by watching Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. Oh, nice. Um, it is my favorite movie of all time. I have not seen it yet. I need to see it. No spoilers. Me to go see it. So no I gotta spoilers. see it. <laughs> it's, uh, okay. it's my, it's my favorite movie of all time. Um, and I, the day after I saw it, I was standing in the grocery store and, uh, the guy in front of me was just kind of standing there and I said, Hey, have you seen Spider-Man in the Spider-Verse yet? I was telling everyone about it. Everyone (laughs) I came in contact with, I was telling them about it. And then I went, why, why am I so excited to tell people about this? So I've gone through, I've watched it several times. I bought it the, the minute it came out, um, and I've taken notes on wow. much every scene of the entire movie and why it made me feel the way it did. Why was I telling random people in the grocery store about it? So I'm taking the elements from beginning to end mm-hmm. and structuring my 45-minute show the exact same way that movie is structured. So hopefully wow. people will go and tell random people in the grocery store about this show they saw. And so that's that's my creative process right now is um, another example. I I was listening to a song the other day, um, and we've all had it. It gave me chills, just sent chills yeah. down my back and arms. And I went, why did that just happen? Not because it was a beautiful moment, but why? Scientifically, why did it happen? So I started right. researching, researching why, what happens, what chemical causes us to have chills. It's not just a mental thing. There's a biological reason yeah. for have chills so i researched it and researched it and i found out exactly what it is and i'm structuring moments in my show to create the biological breakdown that creates someone that causes someone to have chills um because i want those emotional moments in there i want to structure those as uh as carefully as i can you are dedicated my man that's uh, awesome it's my passion very cool what uh Take me through something that you recently have created and tell me about, I want to know from start to end and then the final result of your performance of it and how you felt it went. So and I know uh, I didn't, yeah, I know I didn't give you that question. This is an on the spot question. Nope. This is fine. <laughs> um, I, it's probably the latest thing that I created and this isn't, Um, this is, it's not in my current show. Um, it, it doesn't fit with what I want to do, but I, the same thought process went into it. This was before uh, watching the Spider-Man movie. Um, but the same thought process went into it. What do I want to create here? Let me build moments into, into why. Um, and I just wanted a really fun piece of magic, just something really fun. Um, very funny. Um, and just very clever. And uh, I've always liked the old, the the old trick um, where a magician borrows a dollar bill and has it signed or or notes down the the serial number, sure. makes it disappear, and then it it uh, appears inside of a piece of fruit, typically a lemon or a, or an orange. Um, and I've always I've always liked I've always thought it was very impossible and very interesting, um, but it's never made sense to me. Right. Um, why, just, why would it end up in a lemon? 
<laughs> right. So, um, what I did is I started thinking, how can I make this make sense? How okay. can I uh, give this um, continuity? How can I just make this jive? So I sat down, thought about it, and uh, thought about what if it, what if uh, the dollar ends up inside of a, a fake lemon instead of a real lemon? Okay. And so I was just thinking, and I said, what if it's what if it's monopoly money instead? What if we just do something different? <laughs> yeah. So I ended up coming up with with a routine where I borrow a dollar bill. Um, we we note down the serial number. Uh, and then I introduce um, a product that changed my life. Um, I talk about how I was sitting at home watching TV uh, late at night, early in the morning, and I saw an infomercial uh, for a spray that could um, either make you more animated or more calm, okay, depending on whatever you wanted. Uh, and this, of course, is not a true story. Just It's just a fun <laughs> bit. Um, and so I take it, I spray the dollar bill, and I hand it to them. And in their hand, uh, when they open their hand back up, it's now Monopoly money. Nice. Um, and then uh, it disappears because we spray it too much. Uh, and then I take a, a plastic lemon and, uh, and give it to them. They verify that it's hollow, it's fake. Uh, I spray it, and then in their hand, it becomes a real lemon. Wow. Uh, and then we cut it open and, and the and the bill is inside. Um their their original bill, not the monopoly money. Um right. and so and then when I performed it, it, go, it goes over very well. It, it has all the comedic timing that I wanted. Um it's it's fun just like I wanted all these things that, that I had planned and structured. Um but that was kind of my thought process. What can I do different than anything I've ever seen? Yeah. I want to make sure that no one can go to my go they can come to my show and go oh i've seen this before right right um they might have they might have seen a dollar bill go inside a lemon before but they've never seen a dollar bill turn into a fake dollar and a fake lemon turn into a real lemon and now the bill and and it sounds like it's got a lot of steps and it's convoluted but everything's working it makes perfect sense it's chapters to a story there is a lot going on but it all makes sense is that a is that a how much of that routine takes up of your show uh, so it's a, it's a seven minute routine. Okay. Um, but like I said, it's currently, currently not in my show. Okay. Um, it doesn't fit the show that I'm writing. Um, but it might, it might squeak its way in. We'll see. We'll see <laughs> by the time we're done. It's such a fun thing to perform. It might, it might end up finding its way in, but, uh, I'll know, I'll know soon. Nice. Uh, let's take a moment and let's play a game. All right, let's do it. Uh, let's play two truths and a lie. Two truths and a lie. Do you want to go first? Sure. Okay. Actually, let's have you go first. I've got to think a little bit. <laughs> I've, I've done 15, of, well, almost 15 of these. I'm running out of truths and lies here. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Truth. I took first place at a magic competition i won people's choice at a magic competition two truths and a lie and so i let's see <laughs> I took first place, I took people's choice, and I performed for David Blaine. All right. Well, this is hard. Actually, that's going to be a... <laughs> Let's see, I, that's got to be a lie, cause, because how about let's say I met David Blaine. <laughs> Because <laughs> I can't do that one. <laughs> so I met David Blaine, took first place, took people's choice. Okay. So I was there the night you met David Blaine. Oh, yes. I've seen you perform, and I know you're good enough to do both of those things. 
I'm going to say the lie is the people's choice. Ah, no, that's the truth. I oh. have, I've never taken first place, so that would be the lie. Oh, man. But that I, surprised I got me. I got people's choice two years in a row. So Wow. That's... And I like that award way better than first place. So Hey, it's a good one for sure. Yep. Okay. Two truths and a lie. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I took gymnastics. Okay. I have performed I've performed for the piano guys. Okay. And I can do my show in four languages. Good. I, I was worried you were going to say naked, so I'm glad you didn't say naked. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. Definitely not. <laughs> okay, so two of those are truth, and one is a lie. Gymnastics. I don't... You're pretty limber, dude. You probably could have done gymnastics. Um, I know doing magic, we can meet a lot of cool people, so you probably could have done the piano guys. Four languages. That could be the tricky one, because you can maybe speak three. But I don't remember you speaking any language. I'm going to go four languages is a lie. It is. I can nice. only do my show in three languages. Perfect. What are the three languages you speak? English, Portuguese, and Spanish. Wow, very cool. And you and you scripted for all of the languages? Uh, not my current show, but I do have a show that is scripted in, in all three. Do you do you lose much when you translate it into other languages um, to perform? Do you lose any sense of humor or? The effect very much. I have to. I have to uh, bring in. Uh, I have to talk to kind of kind of consultants, okay. uh, friends that I have because the jokes don't directly translate over. So, sure. uh, so I don't lose anything because I just bring in in different wordplay and okay and things That's like cool. that. But yeah, nice. Tell me about uh, performing for the piano guys. Yeah, so I did a uh, a show at John Schmidt. Um, I did a show at his house. Oh wow! Um, yeah, he's uh, one of the main guys, the piano guys. I uh, and so I, I guess that one's a, a partial truth. I didn't do it for all of the piano guys, but I did it for, at, at John Schmidt's house. Um, uh, and, and he was there. It wasn't just uh, me in his backyard <laughs> performing. Uh, no, he uh, a good friend of mine. Um, and John Schmidt's son are best friends. Oh, cool. Um, and so we did a just a, a show there, charged ten bucks a person, and and, uh, and I, I did a show there in the backyard with uh, for John, his wife, and their kids. Did, and he, did he provide a company music? He did not. He did not. Uh, wow. He uh, he was relaxing, taking a, taking a nice day off. All right, all right, nice, very cool, very awesome. What uh, Patrick? What? Ad Let's actually talk about that because that's tripping me out every time i call you patrick <laughs> yeah because i'm not used to that no let's of talk, course let's talk about character how important is character development in uh, a magic act or a magic talent yeah it's it's super important it's uh it's extremely important um and what why why is it important and what made you come up with patrick cole and who is patrick cole yeah absolutely um so it's important because, um, don't tell me the title, but I okay. want you to describe your favorite movie in one sentence. Superhero. Superhero. No, your specific favorite movie. Um, tell me, oh, tell, oh. tell me the plot in one sentence. They try to stop a bad guy who wants to wipe out half of the 
population of Earth. Yep. Um, so if you ask a hundred people to do that same thing, you're going to get one thing in common. No one can do it without mentioning the characters. Okay. So you mentioned they, right, and, and who they're who they're trying to to fight. Right. Um, so you can't. It's essential to the plot. The characters okay. are completely essential. Right. And so when people come see my show, when they go back and they're not going to remember the specifics of every trick. Right. I want them to remember the character. Okay. I want them to go and have something to describe my show by. Okay. Um, and and most, in a, not most, but a lot of magic shows that, that you go to, if someone goes back and tries to describe it, uh, the magician did this. Yeah. Well, you get that in, you know, 75% of shows is the magician. Right. There's no, there's nothing to di- differentiate. Because they went to a magic show, yeah. Right, exactly. There's nothing to di- differentiate. And so I... Uh, it's super important to have to have that that will put you apart from from everyone else um, to give them someone to relate to, someone to connect to. Okay. Um, and as far as uh, as me going from performing as Cole Blaylock to to Patrick Cole, um, one. So my last name is it is it's a uh, it's Blaylock. It's not super common. Right. Um, and if if people pronounce it right, they spell it wrong. If they spell it right, they pronounce it wrong. <laughs> okay. Um, if they don't mess it up both ways. So um, I wanted something easy. I wanted something a little easier. Uh, that's part of it. Okay. Uh, I wanted it a little bit a little bit easier because when I come out on stage, I don't want them going cold, late, right. blah, blah, yeah. Um, I want it to be that's confident, smart. clear, concise. I'm out. Right. Yeah, that's smart. Um, and also, um, I, so I, uh, my, my character, I'm the, the friendliest guy you'll ever meet. Okay. That, that's who I want to be. I want to be the most positive guy. I'm never going to talk down on a member of the audience. I'm never going to talk down on anyone. I want everyone to have a positive interaction when they talk to me, when they, when they're around me, I want them to leave thinking, you know what, that, that guy was just really nice. nice. He frightened my day. Right. Um, and so I wanted to translate that. That's how, and that's not just how I live my character. That's how I tr- strive. I'm not perfect at it. But that's how I strive sure. my life. Right. Good. I want people to walk away and go, man, that guy was just so friendly. Yeah. Um, and so I thought, man, that's, that's something I could really pull into a character. Um, and, uh, and Blaylock is a German name. Okay. It's, it's, it's got harsh kind of sounding yeah. um, syllables. Very uh, awkward. Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> and it doesn't sound friendly. Right. It just, it just doesn't. <laughs> um, it sounds, it sounds, it, it sounds, uh, cool and, and mystifying. Right. Mysterious. Um, dark even if i were doing I could, I could see i could see a poster blaylock in the dark and you do it absolutely this if i were doing thing. if i were doing solely mentalism yeah uh, yeah that'd be perfect uh, banachek or um right uh, low sander these are uh-huh. these guys that have gone by you know a mononym and, and it's worked great for them sure but neither one of them are marketed as the friendliest corporate entertainer in the world no um, <laughs> that's awesome and so I'll, this is to, to come to our point earlier about the, the thought process behind creating and, and things like that. Um, I wanted something just friendly, something approachable. Um, and so my, a lot of people don't know this. My middle name is actually Cole. Um, okay, yeah. My name is Patrick Cole Blaylock. And, uh, and so someone suggested to me, why not just kind of shift one over, drop Blaylock for performance. Uh, I, all my friends still call me Cole. My family calls me Cole. Uh, it's, it's not something I push or, or even want my friends to, right. uh, 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 you know, call the people, me Patrick. Right. And, and it's not something I push, uh, but the new friends that I make, um, you know, okay. especially in, in a performance world, I, I do introduce myself as Patrick Cole. Um, nice. and, and so, yeah, it's, it's, it's purely for, um, I won't say purely for character, but it's purely for, for character business. Um, and just how I want myself viewed as a performer and entertainer. Well, what I, what I like about your character is, you know, I would think 
that people get into their roles so much that it's hard to be that person and then their real self. Yeah. But I, I think what's cool about your character is you can be your character and your real self and they mesh well together. They do. Um, it's just Patrick Cole is a, uh, is a heightened Cole Blaylock. Okay. Um, just a little bit more extravagant, um, a little more out there. <laughs> uh, a, little, a little more high energy. I'm already a pretty high energy guy. Yeah, you are. Yeah. But but Patrick Cole's just a little more high energy. Um, yeah, very and and just a little more heightened. Um, and so yeah, it's uh, it's it's just a heightened version of me. That's that's what uh, my personal character is. So very nice. I like it. Uh, let's do a random question, and then we'll do some wrap up, and yeah. we'll go from there. So random question. I love time travel, so we I do a lot of time travel questions. So, if you can go back in time and perform for anybody historical, who would you perform for? What would you perform, and why? And how do you think they would react? Wow. I know, so many choices, huh? Does it have to be a historical figure, or can it be just someone in the past? It could be somebody you know. Okay, um, I'd like I'd like to perform for my grandfather. Nice. Um, he never he never really got to see me perform, um, and uh, he passed away when I was um, when I was eight years old. So right when I first got into it, but I wasn't performing for people. I just had an interest, um, and I would I would love to, to perform for him. Um, I would. Uh, I would probably perform a um, uh, there's a a wow, that's a tough question. Um, even though it's not something I perform, uh, it's something I know how to do. I'd probably do some metal bending for him. Okay. He would have thought he would have thought that was the coolest thing in the world. <laughs> uh, he's a very tough, burly guy, and so I would uh, I would like to see him uh, him watch me do what he could probably do with his hands, but uh, <laughs> but without. Uh, right. I, I think that would have been fun. That's cool. Very awesome. Um, all right. What advice would you give to people starting out, trying to find their passion, trying to find their character, uh, maybe even young people or really anybody in their stage of life? What advice would you give them? Yeah, try everything. Um, my wife and I have kind of an inside joke. Uh, we talk about my graveyard. Um, I have such a big graveyard of uh, of things that I've said that I'm going to do or learn how to do. And then I start and go, you know what? This isn't for me. I don't want to dedicate um, the amount of time to this that it would take to be proficient at this. Because when right. I do dedicate time to something, I go all in. Um and so I, I do cost benefit analysis on everything and, and go, OK, do I do I really want to take the time it's going to it's going to take to learn how to do calligraphy? Thought yeah. I did realize it's very hard through in my graveyard. Um, I've got so many things in my graveyard, but because of that, um, I know what I the things that I want to do. I, I perform magic. I perform stand up comedy. I act. I write. Um, and these are all things that were potentially going in my graveyard, but they didn't because I loved them. I fell in love with, with them. Um, and so I would just expand your graveyard, just kill off ideas left and right. You want to learn how to do something, look into it, study it out. It might not be for you, but then you know, hey, you know what? And then you can always go back. That's the really cool sure. thing about, uh, about this kind of graveyard. You can always go dig it up. It's not, it's not always dead. It's just sleeping. Um, yeah. Just a nice rest. Um, and so, that's, a, that's a really cool metaphor and just a way to look at it. I like that a lot. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's it's become it's become a little joke with with my wife and I. And I'll, I'll say <laughs> something, and she'll say, "Is this one going in the graveyard?" I say, "I don't think so." And then a few days later, it's it's in the graveyard. <laughs> the but, graveyard. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, that's that would be my advice. Expand that as much as you can. Just love it. Try to figure out things that that uh, you haven't done that you don't know how to do. Um, and, and just learn them. You, there's so many avenues to learn things now. Yeah. Uh, just don't be content with being ignorant. 
figure yeah. things out, learn how to do them, ask people that know how to do them. People are generally willing to help. Yes, um, they are. And uh, so I, when I started, I had the idea to do the podcast. I had no clue. YouTube, yeah. I, I watched a ton of YouTube and uh, you're doing a great job with it, by the way. I mean, oh, you're doing thank you. Thank you. It's been a lot of fun making a lot of new friends and getting a lot of great advice and people, awesome people like you being on the show. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Of course. Can I do uh, one quick thing with you? Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I want you to think of a number. Okay. Don't say it out loud, but just think of a number for me. One number or? Uh, it can be a number between one and a hundred. Um, just a number. And it doesn't even have to follow within those parameters. Just. Okay. I got it. it. Got it? Yeah. Okay. Um, Should I write it now or no? Uh, it's fine. But here, yeah, you can write it down. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, and this is not an exact science. It, if it goes wrong, that it might happen. But <laughs> okay. <laughs> let's, let's just try here. Um, what number are you thinking? I have one piece of paper here. That's what number uh, are you thinking? I wrote, I wrote down 11. 11. Okay. Well, we might have to edit this part out because, uh, cause I got <laughs> 92, but that's okay. Oh, that's well, okay. What, what, what's interesting about the 92? Yeah. Hold that up. Hold yeah. up. What, what's nine plus two? There you go. Eleven. I was you were just one step ahead of me. That yeah. So I probably I I thought of nine and two and I added it together. So there you go. <laughs> All right. Pretty cool. Very good. What's uh what's in store for uh Patrick in the future? What are you working on? Um, so I have a uh within the next hopefully six months, uh, I'll have a book coming out. Wow um that's ambitious it is yeah it's uh it's um going through editing now okay um so this is a beyond fame exclusive then or do, or do, or do people know about it not many people know about this no okay no nope. uh yeah this is this is pretty uh yeah, pretty privileged information <laughs> what's the uh what's it about what's the title uh the title is still in the works um, but it's, it's about, uh, it's a self-help book. Okay. Um, uh, it's about becoming an asset to other people and to yourself and, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And just making sure you're getting the most out of, out of life and, and becoming, uh, you know, using every day to, to your advantage. Very cool. I yeah. Like it. Yeah. When, uh, is, when is it scheduled to be released? Um, we, we run into a few complications as far as editing and, and some things like that. Um, okay. We were we were originally looking um, around late December, early January. Um, we've uh, hit a few bumps. We're going back through editing. Have to do a few little rewriting and stuff. So uh, we're we're hoping um, late summer. Okay, sweet. We'll yeah. we'll watch out for it. Absolutely. Um, any final thoughts? No, just thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you, my brother, and. Fist bump there. That's it. Um, well, what uh, I do ask this uh, with all my guests because I do love referrals. So, of course. Who, who do you think is awesome and talented and would be a lot of fun, as much as fun as you uh, to have on the show? And who can you yeah. get in touch with? Absolutely. Um, I've got a few ideas okay. floating around. Um, I will. Uh, I will send. I will send you names of all of them. Okay. Okay. All right. So okay. it'll be a mystery, mystery referral. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I've, I've got to got to talk to a few of them, make sure we're, we're they have the time, and but okay. I got I've, I've got a few for you. All right, cool. That'll be awesome. Awesome. Well, thanks, my man, Patrick. You're awesome. Always yes. fun to hang with you. Can't wait till we uh, meet again at the next uh, magic conference somewhere and hang out and Absolutely. jam and all that good stuff. So appreciate Absolutely. you. Of course. Hey, thank you. See ya. Yeah. Thanks, Patrick. Bye-bye.